Thankfully, not so much. They got to keep a close eye on this thing. Chris Larson joins us right now. And uh, Chris, you've seen, you used to work in North yeah. Carolina. Mm -hmm. You've seen hurricanes roll on in. What's it like? Uh, it's wild. The, the strongest I have ever been in is a Category 2 hurricane, and the winds are immense. But I can tell you in North Carolina that some of the deadliest, most devastating, and costliest hurricanes have come from Category 1 or 2 storms that not necessarily because of the wind, but it's the floods okay. and the torrential rains mm -hmm. that come their way. And that's what they're going to be looking at here the next couple of days. Let's go ahead and put our maps into motion. There you can see the center of circulation, but already some of that outer precipitation and banding beginning to to affect Wilmington down towards Myrtle Beach in Charleston. So you can sort of make out an eye wall there and all of that is pushing that water in across the coast. And while it is right now a tropical storm, it's going over these warm Gulf Stream waters, the Gulf of Mexico there, uh, the Gulf Stream waters from the Gulf Stream, I should say. And those water temperatures, the sea surface temperatures are in the 80s to the mid 80s, even close to 90 degrees in some places. And that just is going to fuel this hurricane. So really from Savannah up to Charleston. We're talking about torrential rain, four, six plus inches of rain. There you can see Charleston right now. It looks like it's going to make a landfall somewhere between Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, the barrier islands of North Carolina and up towards Wilmington. So don't be confused by the strength of the storm, but just pay attention over the next 24 to 36 hours about how much rain they're getting there. A quiet morning here in Colorado Springs and along the front range. We have seen morning showers and thunderstorms out into Kansas. That thicker deck of cloud cover is beginning to break up. That's a live look from Monument, our community Banks of Colorado camera. So we'll continue to see those clouds thin out a little bit over the next couple of hours. We've warmed to 50 degrees on Wilkerson Pass, 60 Manitou Springs, 56 Peyton, and 60 right now in Fountain. And here's our ridge of high pressure still holding tight for Monday and Tuesday. And we will continue to see little pieces of energy coming up and over the top of that ridge, keeping our chance for showers and thunderstorms going right now, I think, through it probably at least Thursday afternoon. Forecast highs of this afternoon in the mid 80s to the lower 90s. And late today, we will see those scattered showers and thunderstorms begin to fire. As early as 1 o'clock, they're very small and isolated in nature. But as we go into the heating of the afternoon and that instability increases from 4, 5 into 6 o'clock, certainly could see some stronger storms down towards Trinidad, Pueblo, and up along the Palmer Divide over towards Lyman, those showers and thunderstorms firing. By 8 p.m., out towards La Junta and Springfield here along the Front Range, most of the activity is beginning to die down and we'll get partial clearing again as we head overnight. All right, seven day forecast. 60% chance for showers and storms, 78 degrees this afternoon, 81 Tuesday and Wednesday, Thursday and Friday into the lower 80s. 87 degrees is your high. 80, uh, 83 to 93 on Tuesday, 92 coming up on Wednesday afternoon. Pueblo, chance for showers and thunderstorms. And by the weekend, we're drying out, but we're warming temperatures up into the low 100s. And here in Colorado Springs, 84 this afternoon, upper 80s and low 90s, 91 Friday, and again, drier as we head into the weekend. You know, a Category 1 hurricane, the maximum sustained winds are 74 miles an hour. And you, you think about that, we see gusts here sometimes to 70 miles an hour. But when you're talking about standing out there and that is just a constant wind and then it's blowing that water on shore, it, it, it's a pretty amazing sight to see. That's a category one at 74. So e even if it's just a tropical storm, the, the winds are lower, but it could still put down in coastal areas and, and into the Piedmont there. You could see that four, five, six, some models indicating up to eight, nine, 10 inches of rain uh, from coastal North Carolina, and that just creates devastating flooding. Great insight, Chris. We definitely Keeping a